Hello everyone, uh, again, maybe in the previous uh, uh, slide uh, we were talking about imagination, I think there was a cut in there, so it's basically that we, we can make things possible, our, our imagination is is beyond, I mean, what we can imagine, so it's, it's, it's incredible, so okay. So uh, continuing, I uh, just wanted to mention a few more uh, things about Maxime, which was the founder and director of the Center for Social Imagination, the Arts and Education at Teachers College, Columbia University. She was the past president of Philosophy of Education Society, the American Educational Studies Association, the American Educational Research Association, member of the National Academy of Education, and nine honorary degrees, diverse awards. So basically, uh, we can see that she was, uh, and she still is, dedicated to education uh, nowadays and, and, and all her life and it's her passion as we mentioned before in a previous uh, slide. Uh, talking specifically about curriculum which is, is one of our, our main topics, uh, one of our main topics, uh, uh, we we know uh, um, or at least I mean we, we we should know that curriculum comes from the Latin word, which means course or race. So it's like, uh, uh, basically, uh, from from my point of view as a teacher, uh, it makes sense because sometimes we struggle to, according to the, to the school's uh, um, point of view, or according to the uh, principal's point of view, we have to finish the curriculum in a specific time, in a quarter, in a semester, in a year. And, and, and it's so it, basically we're running against time because we have to deliver that curriculum no matter what. So that's what we're doing. I mean, trying to fit all that contents from the curriculum into a specific subject or object in this case. The students. That's why the, the, the cartoon it says it doesn't seem to fit very well. No matter, the principal said we had no choice. So it's like, you know, trying to fit the curriculum, technology, or whatever new topic it is, into the curriculum because we have to do it and that has to be delivered to the students no matter what. So it's 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 like when, when you have a mass production of things in a company, it's the same story. We have to produce a certain amount of final products by the end of a, of a period of time. And we sometimes see like that uh, uh, the, 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 the school, the education and schools. And Maxine mentions, it, it, I mean, we cannot think about the school as, as a mass production. I mean, we're not producing things or objects. We're transferring knowledge. And to transfer that knowledge, we have to do it in such a way that the curriculum has to be flexible, likewise, teachers and students. It's, 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 we know that curriculum, especially nowadays, I mean, not only nowadays, uh, since 1800s, 1920s, 1940s, 50s, and, and onwards, World War I, World War II, uh, uh, then the, 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 the revolution of different administrative theories. Then nowadays with, 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 the, with the technology and information, the curriculum changes and it's constantly changes. We know that it happens every month, every quarter, every year in every school. So we, we have to accept that it, it has to change, but we have to try to make those changes in a soft way to be able to transfer knowledge in the better way for for students. We we can we we cannot just accept it as it is and that's it. Unfortunately, sometimes not all teachers think like some teachers like 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 me in the sense that we have we have to be flexible. Yeah, I follow the curriculum, but I'm flexible and and deliver to students the best way I can for them. To, to receive the maximum benefit of, of, of the knowledge. We know that the curriculum changes. We know that we, 
we copy from other countries or we borrow from other countries or we lend to other countries our curriculums, our educational programs for them to adapt to the situation. And nowadays with economic changes, cultural changes, social changes, political changes, technological changes, all these things going around the globe, the curriculum is changing constantly. So it's, 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 it's not something that it's fixed and you cannot do nothing about it. You, you can. I mean, it's not that if you don't want to do it, yeah, but you, you can do it and you have to do it because the world is changing and we have to go with the same pace. We cannot just stand there and, 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 do, and do nothing. Now, it is with that amount of information that we have rec are receiving right now, or the students, and we also as teachers, with the velocity that it's going on nowadays, we have to adapt, take those two variables and try to adapt it to the curriculum. And that's why it's, nowadays we, 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 we're going, not only teaching backwards, yeah, but also like twisting that around and instead of, of handing in documents to students to read, what we do is link, go to this, the, this, the, the, this link, check that link, answer uh, uh, or write a paper, answer questions. I mean, basically our core base is computers. So we're trying to get rid of paper. Okay, that's one, one, way, one way to do it. It's a little bit complex, but, but technology helps us. Now, at, to what point do we include technology in the curriculum? Depends on many variables, school, teachers, students, but we have to continue. And the curriculum, I mean, uh, we have been adapting the curriculum, but never, or up to now, and according to what Maxim tells us, we haven't reached the point to have a quote perfect curriculum or the most optimum curriculum for the students. We're working on that, but we don't know when or how to reach to that point. Because why? Because every single time is changing. So that that make, makes a, a, a little bit uh, uh, different. And curriculum, as she mentions, it's it's. It's a cultural reproduction. And it's true because, as I mentioned before, we, we borrow from other countries, we lend to other countries, we copy from other countries, locally also, from other continents, curriculums, and we adapt it, or curricula, and we adapt it to, to, our, to, to our own uh, educational model. So it's like, but, but also, in, when we copy or when we borrow that curriculum, or that educational program, there's not only those economic, social, and political values, but also there's some cultural values embedded into the curriculum, which at some point we have also to take into consideration. It's not the same teaching in China, Japan, USA, or Asia. There are certain variables that we have to take into consideration. So, yes, we can copy, we can borrow, but it is a little bit of, of, of cultural reproduction. We're pro reproducing those ideas from other places into our system. Transmission of knowledge, obviously. When, 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 when we have a, a curriculum, what are we doing? Transfer, transferring knowledge from one part, one subject, which is the teacher, to another person, or in this case, object, which is the student. It shouldn't work that day, that way, I'm sorry. It should work same subject to subject, interact. So if we do it subject to object, it's like, I just mandate you to do this or to uh, memorize this and that's it. And you just reproduce that or give me back, back the information and, and, and I assess it. That's, that's the right way to do it. There has to be some interaction to be able to, to have more what we call a, a real transmission of knowledge, transfer of knowledge, the real thing and have the opportunity for the, for the, for the children to, to, to analyze that knowledge. Life of the mind. We, 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 we think that, that when they give us the curriculum, that's it. They're building up our mind and that's our life and that's it, no more. No, we have to go beyond that. That, 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 that we have to start to make connections, yeah? 
it's 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 not only of accepting what is in the curriculum and that's it we have to do much more especially the children since they're going to preschool they start making connections and but those connections don't make them inside the, i mean within the curriculum they have to start making connections outside with the real world and and uh, Yandui mentioned it and, and Maxine mentioned it. it we have to try to give students the opportunity to link those connections to the real world otherwise it, 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 it won't work and we continue with the same same idea of, of, of transferring transferring knowledge is just just try to copy what we what we the, what the students copy what we transfer to them and that's it they don't have the ability to think beyond that oh it's the opposite they have to think beyond that transformation yes basically what we're doing we're, we're transforming as i mentioned before the, the the curriculum every other i mean always always transforming i mean making changes uh every single time every single year and and that's what we have to do but those changes have to be also not only because they mandated to do that but also have to be changes that favor teachers students and the system itself so we have to be ready for that and we have to be ready for those famous unexpected changes nowadays especially with technology and information going on so fast and so much information we have to be ready to to make the changes because uh, some schools uh, we, are, are including more technology into the system into their uh, educational model some of them are just staying behind a little bit but always the important thing is to have students the opportunity for them to open their minds be ready for a change but always related to real world it's it's it's, it's a clue there now one of uh, maxine's uh, quotes said it struck me early in my life that languages of imaginative literature disclosed alternative ways of being in and thinking about the world. Basically, she says that when when uh, she started to 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 read, uh, especially literature, uh, um, she was fascinated by the way the different authors from different points of view, from different countries, from different perspectives, from different type of, 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 of uh, writings, of novels, short stories, uh, poetry, they had a different perspective of life. So with, 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 this, with this slide, what I want to show is there are different ways that we as individuals, as human beings, can search for the truth in life in a different way. We see it in a longer way, in a shorter way, rounded, more like uh, 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 an optimum way, rectangular way, different colors. Uh, you see the brushes, some are more more like, like at the end, more, more closed, other ones are like opened. There are different ways we can see the, uh, our lives. And that's, that's what she's mentioned. I mean, languages of imaginative literature, I mean, with literature, in, you can have different perspectives of life and that way children also to have that perspective of life not only through literature but also through the arts education is an art and we cannot just uh, uh, take for granted that the curriculum and education that's it and we cannot go beyond that that we can we can yeah it's like a kaleidoscope different views different colors different shapes different parameters that's the that's the beauty of education but we have to transfer that to the kids otherwise it it, it won't work it, it it will be it will be too too boring for them to believe in in in, in an art like education that will lead them towards the future in, 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 in this global uh, village. So it's, 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 it's important to, to try to have different perspectives of, of life and that those perspectives come from the different points of view that we have through the arts, especially uh, through literature and, and many other 
arts. Uh, we continue with our next uh, group of uh, slides. Thank you.